Getting us into the side weathering, on these cars what you see is scratches and streaks that mainly go on a horizontal pattern across the sides of each of these panels as they bulge out you get these stress lines and that's what we need to recreate next and I'm going to be using a fine tip brush for this method here this is a real fine atlas brush this is the same kind of brush I use for my graffiti it's a number 155 great brush I'm using water mixable oil again right here burnt umber and then I got a little cap of thinner in the corner plus a paper towel so we're going to basically just create a small wash of this paint and we'll paint on these individual little streaks I just like to load the bristles up just on the tip with that paint and this is a relatively fine wash it's not too diluted it's still pretty thick with paint and again I just like to basically go in here and I'll just run the brush across like this in certain little areas I'm going to try to keep these little scratches kind of uh, bunch together in a way in certain spots I'll break them up again just kind of based on what the prototype photos dictate because uh, I'm trying to refer to these prototype photos as I go but basically you just paint these individual little lines uh, over and over again until you get everything and this is again a very common thing that you see on these older gondolas you see it on box cars you can actually see it on some old hoppers too is these uh, individual little stress lines and how they form. I'm not going to be going too crazy with these panels either. Of course you can go pretty crazy if you need to, but I'm going to be using another brush technique to enhance these uh, with some heavier patches of rust in a second. This is just the pre uh, preliminary layer of this rust technique that I'm doing here. As you can see we've painted those little slash lines down on all these panels and so far it looks pretty good, but we're going to enhance these a little bit more with a small brush technique here. I'm using a relatively uh, scruffy looking brush here with full strength oil and I want to enhance these gouges on the sides with heavier patches of rust and I'm going to basically go in and streak this sideways on some of these panels just to enhance that rust a little bit like this. I'm going to do this again on just certain panels uh, just to highlight some of that rust give it a little bit more depth and a little bit more rusty color uh, again the sides on my particular prototype that I'm modeling are very very rusty I mean some of these get real beat up Alright, so I got all the sides painted now, and you can see in the lighting we actually have all of the panels painted. And it looks really good with all of our enhanced brush effects. Uh, it's very prototypical for these kinds of gondolas, this kind of damage, and it looks really good. So, a lot of that sheen will also be lost once those oils dry up fully. We're going to leave this overnight to dry up, and then by tomorrow we'll be able to actually apply some decals. And as reference for decaling, uh, we'll be doing the DJTX number the black patching and then the patch outs for the safety striping and then the brand new DJ JX logos there so that's what will be next once all this dries up here for the decaling process I got some microscale decals cut up here these are black trim film decals by microscale here's the sheet number if you guys want to get material like this these are great to use because you can do all kinds of really nifty little patch effects like these here on this uh, car so what I've done is I've taken some of these sheets and I've cut little sections up to do the reporting mark the DJJX patch and then some other minor patching on the side of the car I've also used this on the ends already and then over here in the corner are the numbers and letters also from a smoke box graphics decal set I use these sheets here because they have the modern lettering uh, so I just cut the numbers and letters out that I need and apply them to the car like any other regular decal so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and then we'll come back and look at that alright so I've applied the black trim film decal patches where I needed the new data to be put for example where the DJJ logo is and then the reporting marks and I've put some patching for the safety striping where they've covered that up and I've done a little bit more patch work as well looks pretty good and then I applied the lettering and then the DJJ logo, of course. So now what I'm going to do is seal this up and then we will apply the safety striping. Alright, now that we got the safety striping on, I want to go in and apply some fine tagging uh, to replicate some graffiti that I want to do. Uh, I'm going to be using two techniques. I'm going to be using an ink pen technique and I'm going to be using a pencil technique. The pencil technique is good for modeling old, chalky graffiti. Uh, stuff that's been really uh, beaten up on the sides. On these rail guns, these usually have a lot of older graffiti that gets rusted over. And I'm also going to replicate some relatively newer tags with these uh, Jelly Roll ink pen. These are great because these are uh, really good for doing the white, standard like white tags that you see all over rail cars. Uh, so I'll be using this in the corner here, for example. 
and then I'll be doing some small tags in this little panel section here with the pencil. In the corner of this car I'm going to be doing an at uh, because the prototype picture that I have here has one of these little at tags. I've actually seen these before on these cars. They're actually kind of funny. So I'll be trying to replicate that here just like that. And put a little bit of a smaller tag right underneath that like this. Now I'm going in here with the fine pencil that I sharpened up here and I'm just going in and painting these uh, smaller tags in like this. These aren't going to be by any means perfect. They're really rough. So that's how I'm replicating these. Uh, they're just here to give us a little bit more flavor realism on this car. There we go. So just as an added detail, I went ahead and uh, painted on the reporting mark and then the car number to the interior of the gondola on both ends. And this is a neat little feature that you see on these modern gondolas and some bulkhead flat cars where they will take and either chalk or spray paint the car number on the end uh, for identification purposes. Uh, so like I said, again, on both ends of this gondola, I've went ahead and actually chalked on that number using my uh, colored pencil to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to start doing some chalk effects to the sides. Now again I'm not worried about this floor here because this is all going to be covered by a weight and then a false load. I plan on putting a uh, coarse rock load in this uh, because the particular prototype I'm modeling hauls rock from what I've found. So I'm going to be making a custom load for this down the road. Uh, again there's a good look at the uh, interior detailing I did. I did a lot of mud splatter and I did the uh, chalky grimy effects there with the oil. So let's go ahead and do the chalk effects on the interior now. Uh, doing the interior here I'm going to be using three different colors of powders and these are all weathering powders from AIM products. I have medium rust, I have dark earth, and then I have Fresh Rust. These are the main colors I use for the interior. I might also mix in a little bit of chalky white depending on if I need to or not. Uh, but of course, like I said, you can use a multitude of different colors of your choosing to match what you need to replicate on your prototype car, uh, regardless what it is. So I like to have the model kind of set up like this. That way I have good lighting and I can kind of work in the base of the car and then work it out towards the top cord. So I'm going to be using three different brushes here. Now, I have a smaller liner brush and a longer liner brush like this. And I have another uh, relatively fanned out uh, soft bristle brush here that I'm going to be using for these powders. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my long liner brush here with a little bit of the fresh rust, okay? Uh, and generally with the brighter colors, I'm going to start with these first. That way I can layer on over them and kind of diffuse them a little bit. Something like this color is very, uh, very vibrant and it'll stand out a lot. So you usually want to take a color like that and then work that in first and then work over that with your lighter shades of colors. Uh, that way you can blend it out, diffuse it a little bit, but you still have that nice color contrast. So I just take this liner brush here and I'm going to just start working this color in right at the base of that and then I'm going to streak it out. I'm not trying to get full coverage with this color like I said. It's just a uh, highlighting color and I'm just working that out towards the sides like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my medium rust and I'm going to start working some of that in and I'm going to fan that out as well. I'm going to go ahead and switch up to my other brush here. And again, I'm just going to add little highlights of this just where I want it to enhance the interior. And again, I'm just going to just randomly do this here. Notice all the vibrant colors in here. Let's go ahead and diffuse this now. All right. So we're going to be using Dark Earth now, and this is going to bring all of these colors together. So you take in, I get a load on my brush here like this, pretty heavy load of this chalk, and I just go in and I start spreading it around like this. And notice it Im almost immediately basically starts to diffuse these colors and tie everything together. And you just work this in, but also don't work this too much when you're doing uh, anything with these kind of colors, uh, because you'll lose a lot of that color contrast if you start packing that powder weathering in there too much. This is a very subtle 
of a color difference here. But you can see that it has tied that color together and we have the contrast between the, the basically the three different colors of rust here. Uh, it's a very convincing way of doing these gondola interiors because a lot of them have this kind of rust. Uh, again, I'm not going too crazy with this because most of this will be covered up with the interior load, but this is a good background for uh, the look, basically. Alright, so I'm going to do the highlight effects on these panels using a micro brush, and I'm going to be using some dark earth powder and a little bit of medium rust powder. I like to use the powders because you can do a lot of the fresher rust techniques and I can do a lot more of that fine streaking. And again I'm using a micro brush for this because these work really well. Basically what I like to do is take a little bit of this um, medium rust and I'll load it up on my micro brush like this. And I'll just basically come in and I'm gonna just add a little bit of this just here and there. And at first this always looks kinda crappy. Uh, but you just got to be patient with this. Basically what you do is you just add it here and there, uh, mainly on the raised portions and on these gouges mainly, where maybe some of that fresher rust is going to be. Work some of that over that fresh patch area. I'm going to add it some here. Um, one thing with this particular technique, you don't want to go overboard with it. You just want to add this as a highlight to some of these panels, but don't overdo it because it's very easy to overdo. So once I apply that powder, then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and if I can hold this uh, just right, watch the technique here. I start to streak this powder down to look like fresher rust streaking, and I work it down over the reporting marks, over the panels, and it basically looks just like that fresh rust streaking that you see primarily on older cars like this where it starts to kind of work down, mainly from those uh, gouges and such. Uh, and you can, of course, work this in a little bit more. You can use a brush like this, the soft bristle brush, and you can brush it down a little bit. Uh, but this is a really great technique to enhance these dents and gouges if you choose to do them on your gondolas. And it's very simple. So I'm going to repeat this process for each one of these panels. For the top quarter of the car, I'm going to be bouncing back between the medium rust again, and I might also bring in a little bit of fresh rust just to add some highlights here and there. Uh, remember the top cord is usually going to get pretty beat up. Uh, most of that rust is going to be on that interior, however there usually will be a little bit that kind of spills over the side. There's usually a lot of scrapes and a lot of scratches too. Uh, and keep in mind too when these things scrape up against stuff, a lot of those scratches and stuff will be going down the side. So what you want to do is generally not just streak this down. You kind of want to go in a horizontal pattern and kind of brush it this way. And this way, you can kind of replicate some of those little streaks when you do that. This is a key thing I've noticed with gondolas that's really important, because I used to just streak all this powder down, but you actually do want to kind of streak it this way, uh, because it's much more prototypical and much more realistic. So just slowly work that color down, and try not to completely coat these top cords either. Again, that color is going to vary quite a bit in certain little spots, so just kind of vary this up, like I said, and then you can go back, you can add some brighter rust colors here and there. You can add some mud if you want, all kinds of different stuff. These uh, kinds of gondolas, I mean, there's so many different ways you can weather these. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. Alright, so I got the powders applied to the sides and everything's looking pretty good. Uh, it's really toned down those sides quite a bit. It's blended things together a little bit better. Our decals are nicely blended together. The patches don't look as fresh, so that's really nice. Again, that top cord looks really good, so overall I'm very pleased with all of the effects overall. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on these trucks. And I've already painted them, as you can see. The, uh, what I'm going to basically do is apply some dark earth to the truck frames. Uh, I'll generally put a little bit of medium rust, light rust, whatever, over these bearings. And I'll usually take a little bit of uh, white to just brush and dust around the truck frame. Again, just to highlight some things, make some details pop. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on both of these trucks. I'm going to go ahead and skip over that because you guys know how to do all that effect pretty much. I've shown it enough times in a couple of videos. And the next one uh, we'll come back to will be actually painting some mud splatter on this because it's a neat little effect. These are what these trucks look like after I've done that powder work. And you can see they blend in quite well with the car buddy. They look a lot better, a lot more convincing. What I want to do now is add a little bit of fresh mud to them and I like to take and dry brush either a little bit of white acrylic or gray acrylic depending on if I'm modeling fresh or rust or whatnot and I just take it straight from the cap and I do a very basic dry brushing method so if I actually take this and uh, put it in frame here for a second basically what I do 
is I take this cap, I will take a small brush like this, take my paint, and then I will just go in and do some very light dry brushing generally on the front of the frame where a lot of that fresh mud is going to kind of accumulate. You can see it just builds up really around the base of that truck frame, but this is a great way you can model this. Of course you can use oils as well, and you don't necessarily have to keep reloading your bristles here. You can stretch this paint out pretty good and it'll keep going for you. Uh, the lighter the better of course too. You can see as it uh, stretches out you get more of this dry mud effect which is much more convincing and more realistic. Uh, so that looks pretty good so I'm going to be repeating this step on both trucks on both sides. Alright so the car is pretty much done. The weathering has turned out real good and I'm very happy with the car. Uh, this is going to be kind of a bonus section to this video and it's actually going to be on making a foam core load with rocks on it. Now what these cars haul in real life is either scrap metal, they can haul gravel, uh, but in this case what these particular cars that I've been seeing in real life have been hauling are a large boulder rock like this and finer debris rock like this. And it's, I think limestone is what it is, and they've been actually using it to build uh, landfills along the CNO right-of-way outside of Flastoria, kind of down south here in Ohio. So I want to model these cars with this kind of rock load, and I'm basically using real material to do this. Now, what I want to talk about real quick is the actual foam base for these. What I like to use, this is an insert for an Atherin locomotive. This is what you would find inside the box that would be supporting the model inside, like the clamshell packaging. What I do is I take these, I will measure them to the uh, interior dimension of the car, I will cut it out, I will generally cut it in half down the center so it's nice and thin and it has a low profile, and then I'll just simply carve out the profile of the load I want with my knife, and this gives me the optimal freedom to be able to slope it, carve it, and form it exactly how I want it. As you can see, it's perfectly cut to fit inside this car. It's nicely sloped and rounded out. Uh, it's going to work just perfectly for this car. Talking about the load material I'm using, again, I'm going to be using these real stones. Now, I've tried to select these out of my own backyard in my alley, uh, trying to get them as scaled as I can. You can see they're going to be pretty big, but I'm going to try to uh, kind of spread them out, hopefully. Um, some of these are definitely going to be a little too big, but like I said, I'll try to kind of space these out. A lot of the times uh, the bigger rocks are going to kind of be on the ends and then they'll just sort of be scattered around um, the entire interior of the car, like kind of like that. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm going to try to go for here. What I like to glue all of my loads down with is Elmer's Glue All. This is a great uh, glue to use for these kinds of loads. You can use it on wood surface loads, you can use it on foam core loads like this. It's very easy and simple to use. What I like to do is basically you just take the bottle, uh, I'll generally flip it upside down like this, cap off obviously, uh, and I will just try to kind of uh, force the glue out. It's taken a little while, this stuff's pretty tacky. It's a lot more tacky than regular white glue. Uh, but I'm going to take it and I'm basically going to put it right in the center like this and at first you might think that this isn't enough glue but this actually is so I'll take it I'll kind of take that little bit of stringer off like this and then let it release and now we have oops we now have a center of glue in our load and what I like to do is take a paintbrush like this and I will just start to kind of work it out like this kind of towards the end and I'll just spread that glue out as best as I can now I know I put chalk and everything in this interior, uh, but I'm not too worried about that. Simply what I'll do is I'll go back and touch up the chalk coat on the interior of this car later once this load is dry and we're done applying any kind of glue or anything like that. So I'm just going to work this glue into all of these little crevices very carefully. I'm not trying to completely coat the car side itself. I'm really just trying to concentrate all of this glue on the load portion here. And I'm just going to work it out. If you need to add more glue to this, you can, uh, but generally less is more, and you don't want to completely flood this area with glue at first. Just work what you have out, and if again you need to apply a little bit more, simply pour a little bit more on there and work it out. What I'm doing now is I'm just going in and adding some of these boulders to certain little spots of the car, and I'm trying to put the bigger ones and the lower 
corners of the car. I don't want these necessarily in the center uh, because the real cars too with how the way the uh, the boulders kind of get worked out is they'll sort of fall into the corners of the car and then everything else like in the center is usually the uh, finer grade stuff that I've noticed. So I'm just trying to kind of tuck the larger boulders in the corner of the car and then I will just um, fill this out in a second but I'm just kind of randomly positioning these with tweezers like this and I'll just kind of just again spread them out now once I'm satisfied with this random spacing I'll come back in with the finer rock material and I'm just gonna start filling this in like this again just a, a random manner just going in and filling in and trying to get as much of this filled in try to get as many of these rocks on target as I can these will work out a little bit uh, if you need to flood the area with the rock don't be afraid to we can just remove what extra there might be afterwards also what I'm gonna be doing is I will be putting some woodland scenic scenic cement over all this and it'll help again to seal what might be a little bit loose on top more into place Now that I've got the rock shifted into place, you can see it's nice and low profile in the car. Uh, it looks perfectly scaled for what I'm trying to model here. I'm very satisfied with that. Uh, but right now, this is the point in time where you just want to double check everything, make sure there's no other bare spots you got to fill in or cover, and then you're going to let this dry for a few hours, and then probably by tomorrow we can start doing the final layers of glue, like I said with the Woodland Scenics product. Uh, also make sure you kind of clean out any debris. For example, there's a little pine needle I gotta remove there. Uh, any little debris like that, make sure you pull out of this rock before it sets in place. Uh, but as you can see, we got a very realistic looking coarse rock load for this car. So I'm gonna let that dry out. We'll come back and take a look when it's time to add the rest of the glue. Alright, here we are at the end stage of this project, and as you can see, we have the rock load firmly in place now, and I actually forgot to film the last step, but basically what I did was I took my bottle of Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement in the spray bottle, I took the nozzle and I put it right up to the rock load once I let all of the uh, base glue dry, and I just applied a little bit of pressure to the trigger and saturated this entire load with little drops of this glue at a time until I got this completely flooded with glue. I let it dry for 24 hours and as you can see once it's dry we have a nice firm rock load. It's not going anywhere. It's uh, very well in place and it actually provided us with a little bit of the weight that we needed for this car. Uh, so it worked out really well and this is actually the first car I've done with this uh, convincing quarry rock load and I'm very happy with it. And of course it looks really good in this uh, nicely weathered car. Uh, but that's going to pretty much do it for now on this video guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more content I'll be posting some more videos uh, upcoming here pretty soon. And of course, follow my work on Facebook and Instagram. My Facebook page is Dan's Custom Trains, and my Instagram is Danny Dankinson. You guys can follow me there to see what kind of things I'm working on. I'm, of course, always posting pictures and videos of the projects I'm doing for myself and for other people. Uh, so thank you for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.